Holly Suttich and Bradley Hagen are the co-founders of Forrick, a new healthy energy drink company that uses guayusa. And that's an ancient Amazonian leaf. The pair won 20,000 in cash and 10,000 in packages at the AUT X Challenge Awards night in December. They join me now. Well, first of all, personally, you've both been able to combine a career with your passion in life. So individually, I'll start with you, Holly. What was your passion, first of all? Uh, from So I studied communications and business at AUT, and there's a lot of great entrepreneurship programs there, uh, and it really piqued my interest for working for myself and doing my own thing. And something that's really important to me is having a social impact through business. So by taking the initiative of starting our own business, uh, we got the opportunity to be able to make a difference. And Bradley, for you? Yeah, mine's, mine's quite similar. So my passion for business started when I attended um, Venture Up, which is a business accelerator program. I just came fresh out of high school. Um, I had a sort of a different idea initially of what I wanted to do. Um, but through that program, uh, I knew entrepreneurship was, was the thing for me. Um, and so when we came up, uh, Holly and I met at AUT um, in the halls there, and we had... Uh, a very similar sort of interest in, in business and, and making a change um, socially and environmentally. Um, and yeah, that's sort of where the idea sparked of, of developing um, an energy drink company that makes a real difference. It, it's interesting because you're both in your early 20s. So what is it the mindset that you have that past entrepreneurs haven't got? Uh, I think... Something that's been really helpful for us is that we've created Forrick. Uh, it's for the new generation by the new generation. And so we have this incredible understanding of who our consumers are and what they want because we are those consumers and we're constantly surrounded by them. I looked at your website and you've got this. It looks, it looks for younger people. It looks the sort of thing that perhaps um, I sh am I. Am I right in saying I shouldn't be having it? Because it uh, doesn't look like it's same for me. It doesn't mean I wouldn't drink it, but do you know what I mean? Uh, absolutely not. I actually, we, um, we've been doing supermarket taste testings at a variety of New Worlds, and the feedback that we've got from a huge age range has been so, so positive. Uh, it's really been eye-opening because we originally thought our initial target market would only be young people, but, um, yeah, the positivity that's come through from a huge age range has, has been really... Um, Really exciting. Because you want to make a change too. Now, th now this product, I gather it, it would be, would it be fair to say it's, it can't compete with the cheaper products? Uh, it is a more premium product. Uh, however, trends are showing that consumers are willing to pay and actively looking for uh, options that are clean, that don't uh, have lots of artificial ingredients and refined sugars. Uh, and so we believe that there is a strong proposition for Forrick in the market. All right, now let's talk about this, this leaf. It's pronounced guayusa. What exactly is it? So guayusa, it's an Amazonian super leaf, and it's grown in Ecuador in the Amazon rainforest. Um, it's naturally caffeinated, it's organically grown, and provides a clean-feeling energy. And we were really, um, in the early stages of our business, we were really quite impressed uh, with our supplier um, and the way that they've sort of grown and sort of making a social impact over there. Um, so when, so the Guayusa plant, um, as, the, as the demand grows uh, for the ingredient, they're actually replanting um, more plants, which is reforesting the rainforest, which is something that Holly and I, um, yeah, really, really sort of piqued our interest when starting this business. Um, and so what we've decided to do, we've decided to put this ingredient um, in an energy drink with all other natural ingredients um, that's created this all natural, no added sugar, clean feeling energy drink. But how did you come, how, how did you get to the leaf? So we did a whole lot of research, um, particularly overseas. Uh, what what other companies were doing, and we we found this company um, that, called Runa, and so they so they have approximately um, three thousand farms over in Ecuador um, that 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 plant this leaf, um, and they're making a huge difference over there. And they had a, a mission uh, when they first started to to provide a clean feeling energy because they saw an opportunity in the market um, that that wasn't filled, and so we came across. 
across this ingredient and and decided to bring that over to the New Zealand market because there's a as Holly explained before there's a huge trend for people wanting um, an option that just was completely natural um, and that just provided them the functionality and energy that they needed throughout the day. But Holly, it's, it's a really tough market. When you talk energy drinks, there's numerous competitors. Why, oh, why would you sit and go, I know, let's go into a really competitive area? <laughs> yeah, some people call us crazy. Uh, and I suppose that kind of comes with our enthusiasm, I suppose, with our age where we were ready to take a risk and we wanted to make a positive difference. Uh, and uh, even though there are big players in the industry, uh, we so believe uh, in our brand and in our story uh, and in the difference we want to create uh, that that determination uh, in our product is not going to be swayed um, by intimidation. I mean, you're talking, you mentioned New World Supermarkets. To even get on the supermarket shelf is not easy these days. So you've got an advisory board. Mm -hmm. how, who are they and how did you get them involved? Absolutely. So uh, our first advisor uh, is Dan Meeklejohn, and he has extensive FMCG experience working for Pepsi, uh, for DB Breweries, uh, and he is our FMCG 101 guru uh, in informing us on every aspect of our business. We're on the phone with him all the time. Uh, Jen Mackendo, who's digital marketing at Air New Zealand, and she has FMCG experience at DB Breweries also. Uh, we have Steve Cooper, who is the uh, ex-CFO uh, of DB Breweries and also uh, Kotahi Logistics and is currently working as CFO of Tato, a startup at The Grid in Auckland. Uh, so great range of skills, uh, all FMCG based with financial skills, marketing skills, uh, practical industry skills that have really... But did, did you approach them though or did, did they hear about you and approach you? Um, it's a bit of a mixture. So actually, we um, when we participated in the AUTX Challenge, uh, part of the process is that you get an, an advisor. Uh, and we'd met with Dan previously uh, a few times, and he'd given us advice, and we worked really well with him. Uh, and then he requested to be our mentor for the X Challenge. Uh, so he really pushed us and challenged us, and we learned so much, uh, especially getting thrown into Dragon's Den-style pitches without knowing it, uh, uh. <laughs> and he introduced us to our other advisory board members. Okay, how do you finance it, um, Bradley? Because this is not cheap. Yeah, so when we first started, so we got seed investment from a, a private investor. Um, then we also hit, so we so the terms of that is we had to hit a couple of, of milestones. We first had to get um, a product ready for the market, uh, sort of a, it, it, yeah, it's sort of a product ready for the market. Um, and then we had participated in the AT Venture Fund where we came um, third equal and we were fortunate enough to win some prize money there. That led us on to the AUTX Challenge um, where we won $20,000 um, in cash and $10,000 in prizes. And that sort of validated our business. And so then we were approached by uh, a private investor who was really interested and passionate and, and and saw the vision that we had for the company and decided to make that investment. So you've got two employees, both of you, in the company at this <laughs> stage and uh, you're obviously taking out wages. Are you bringing enough money to sustain that? Uh, so currently we aren't taking wages. We're really passionate about getting all the money reinvested back into the business. Uh, and we officially launched a week and a half ago uh, with a fantastic positive response and um, we're already having repeat sales uh, from stores that are selling out of our product uh, so we when we're comfortable enough and we're ready to take some wages we will but in the meantime we work other jobs um, I teach entrepreneurship at AUT uh, and and that's how we manage ourselves we're really passionate about making say, this work would, you be, would it be fair to say you need a funding round uh, no, I, I don't. You know, with the investment that we've got, um, there's no requirements at this point in time for another funding round. Um, but you know, potentially in the future, um, that that may occur. But for now, not right now. It, it's interesting, Holly, that you teach sort of entrepreneurship. And you both, you know, with the path that you described earlier. Is there any difference between theory and practice? Um. Well, the program that I teach is quite a practical program. It's a nine-week program uh, called Co-Starters, uh, and it takes 
individuals who have an idea uh, through the process of actually validating that idea and potentially taking it to market who might not have previous business experience. Uh, so my passion there lies in um, being in touch with the entrepreneurship e ecosystem in New Zealand and um, providing that support for other individuals of all ages uh, to follow their passion as well. Uh, so the theoretical side definitely comes into it, uh, but you learn the most from the practical experience. Yeah, I mean, Bradley, you know, you, you were brought up to say this is how you do this or this is how you do that, but when, when it comes down to the coalface, nine times out of ten, it's completely different, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we, we look, Holly and I have learned so much um, just just going out there and just learning it as, as we go. Um, you know, we've, we've had uh, our downs, but we've also had so many ups and so many positive learning experiences that we have taken away um, through the practical stuff that we've experienced so far um, but in saying that um, you know the theory and stuff that we have learnt especially in AT and other business programs has been valuable and has contributed um, to sort of the practical experiences that that we've had. So what's the big learning Holly what's that one big one? Um, I think it's about not being naive because we're young and we we I can't lie, we don't have 20 plus years experience in the industry. Uh, so it's about ensuring that we're surrounding ourselves with the right people who know the right information, are passionate about what we're doing uh, and are willing to help. Uh, and also um, being smart and looking after ourselves. So obviously um, mental health is... What do you mean by that? Um, well, mental health is such a big issue in New Zealand and that's what um, we're having a social impact with with our startup as well. Uh, and that isn't... Um, something that we take at face value. We uh, integrate that into our um, team working together. We make sure that we're coping with everything, that we're not overly stressed, that um, because essentially you can't have a successful business or a successful startup if we're not looking after ourselves as well. I, I mean, I buy what you say, but a lot of people, I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs, if I said that, you know, there's a young, there's a young couple of people who are starting a business and they're trying not to have stress in business, I'm sure there'd be a lot of business oh, people go, well, yeah. they go hand in hand. Oh, absolutely. So the, the, the stress is absolutely real, um, but it's how we deal with it uh, that is helping us make sure this is a success. How, how do you deal with it? Uh, that comes with a range of things. So uh, every so at the moment we're working seven days a week, uh, but we make sure that we have some time uh, on the weekend where we completely shut off. We go and do something else for our mental health. We take a walk. Um, we catch up with friends. We make sure we're not um, completely disconnecting from other parts of our lives uh, to make sure that yeah we're in a state where we can deal with the stress and deal with all the demands of starting a business. And is it the same for you, Bradley? Yeah, I mean, it's the same for me. You know, we, we both we both try and <laughs> even though we're working seven days a week, we still try and balance, you know, work, but also also relaxation time, um, time to ourselves. Um, but also an important part of our business is, is, is mental health. And so what we've committed to is five cents from every unit sold of our bottle. Um, we'll go to a mental health organisation. We actually have goals to scale that up to 20 cents uh, per unit uh, in four years' time. So per, so on our anniversary of our business every year, we will up up that five by five cents until we, and then we'll cap it at 20 cents. And so that's also something that, that Holly and I have really built into our business and are extremely passionate about um, is sort of, you know, giving giving back um, as much as possible um, to, to an, such an important cause to us. Look, I admire what you're doing and I'd like to wish you the best of luck. Thanks for talking to us. Hey, thank, thank you, you so much. much.